These are difficult, large topics. They may be a little sensitive, but given the subject matter, I want to be explicit, not endorsing positions here. I'm just laying out the positions, but you can't avoid them given the subject matter. So essentially, South Paul for a long time was on the EFAP podcast. He recently separated with them over terriers and what he considers misrepresentations. One of the misrepresentation issues was over whether or not a certain character, a female character in Terriers, a neo-noir show, was basically assaulted. And the hosts, Mahler, Fringy, Rags, and others, took the viewpoint she wasn't really a victim. In fact, she may have deserved it. And Southpaw, I think, brings in devastating evidence to say they're being very deceptive. Arguing in bad faith? I suggest first looking in a fucking mirror. I've had quite the lovely experience of being accused by EFAP fans of claiming that EFAP are okay with rape for having referred to what they did here as victim blaming out of ignorance that this character was raped, which EFAP refuses to either take the L on or correct their fans for claiming that I had called them rape apologists, even though SK personally corrected them on this. Well, I agree his basic point is fine that Mauler, Fringy, and Rags failed miserably. They just misrepresented the show. And they're being, to put it mildly, insanely sexist and toxic. But I also want to be very clear. I am not saying feminism is a good thing. I think you can be very critical of feminism. I think here Southpaw fails and he goes a little bit too far. And he's making some bad additional leaps, which is relevant to Scientology. Because whatever you think about the issue, if you think Danny Masterson should be punished and should go to jail... There is the difficult question about, well, why is Ashton not going to jail? Why is Mila not going to jail? Why is Laura Prepon, who for years was an active Scientologist, why is she not being charged and going to jail? I think those are legit difficult questions. But the way South Pro is framing these issues is not helpful. Her. Because he seems to express regret with hooking up with her after he does see her human form the next day and doesn't find her as attractive, well... That's Wonder Woman 1984 vibes, but a sober college professor hooking up with a drunk student? Well, that's not rape. She just regrets having sex while she was drunk, and she shouldn't have gotten drunk if she didn't want to accidentally have sex. But don't you dare accuse them of victim blaming. Look, if you're going to feign outrage on EFAP's part about this, I'm just going to tell you. I don't care. In the last two years, I've watched enough people just go mask off when getting pushed on this. And to be clear, he's not declaring himself a feminist. He's just saying, well, we shouldn't be blaming victims. We should take the side of the victims, etc., etc., etc. And we should call the R word the R word. Assault is assault, whether a man does it or a female does it. Seems like consistent ethics and morals, but I'm not seeing the consistency. Wonder Woman 84 is a pure fantasy. Now, this is all fantasy. What is happening in Terry's is a fantasy. However... Within the framework of Wonder Woman 84, and remember the context here, that Wonder Woman by this point has saved at least thousands if not tens of thousands of lives. And later, if you count the Snyder Cut as canonical, she saved billions of lives because she helped defeat Steppenwolf. So we're talking about a woman who saved billions of lives and perhaps made a questionable sexual ethical choice and a neo-noir show which is showing people being very corrupt and morally gray. And a woman made a decision that we could be legitimately on either side. Either she made a poor decision and we feel empathy, but is the guy totally guilty? Maybe, maybe not. Versus, no, the guy is definitely evil, creepy. Daniel Masterson, let's put him in jail. And the woman did nothing wrong. It could go either way. It's very ambiguous. But now let's get to Laura Prepon. With one of the victims of Danny Masterson, she tried to convince that woman not to go for it. Because some of these women were Scientologists themselves. And Laura at the time in the 2000s was very active in Scientology. So we have the magical question. Well, why is it with Danny Masterson? It's an issue if we still see the 70s show. It's an issue if he's in the 90s show. As far as I know, he's been written out of it. But Laura Prepon, yes, she's on the 90s show. She's getting a paycheck. And she literally was helping his crimes. It does seem to me there is a double standard. And it's frankly that she's a woman and she declares herself a feminist and magic. And some people in the comment section are like, I don't see why you're being so harsh on Laura. Don't you know she separated from Scientology? Well, maybe, maybe not. But she's still guilty of many things. So I'm not buying that she's not a part of Scientology, by the way. But let's grant she is not a part of Scientology. 
She still did some pretty questionable things. So why is she not being canceled? Why is nobody raising these questions? I don't know. It does seem like certain feminists are very toxic. And when they get pushed or put into a corner, they're going to pull the magical mommy feminist card. And that they're the victims somehow. I don't know how they're victims, but they are the victims. And I agree with Southpaw in principle. What the EFAP did was terrible with Terrier. However, you can legitimately question feminism and even, quote, should we believe the woman in certain cases? We have to be very careful here. Look at Amber Heard, most obvious case. I agree here with the EFAP. They were being moral monsters. But in principle, being anti-feminist is not bad. You can be logical and moral and consistent and say, I am very, very critical of when people abuse their power. But it's bad when feminists do it too. So even if the Scientologist is a feminist, they can possibly be toxic. Wonder Woman 84... I don't think it's coming close to what Scientology does or what Laura Prepon does, but that's my humble opinion. Even if you don't think you're consciously in misogynist, it's despicable. I'm so tired of hearing people defend this point. I'm so tired of hearing EFAP um, accusing Katie of being like some kind of conniving, sinister manipulator who's just a bad person because she didn't stay with a person that she professes her love, despite the fact that they've got every reason to have doubt, serious doubts about that relationship, and she was in a vulnerable state, and she would never have done it when sober. Ah, oh, it's insane. Doesn't it suck that people are only interested in her for She-Hulk and not for Jen? Which to me is Isn't like, weird holy not disclosing fuck, that you've just completely missed the way more important bad thing that happened <laughs> here, show. Yes, she should disclose who, who they're doing yep. things with. Yes, absolutely. Yep.